of the various radical reactions that show up in organic chemistry. Some would argue that perhaps one of the most important applications is synthesis of polymers. Long chain molecules that are made by linking little molecules in great big long chains, many, many units linked together. Thousands, tens of thousands of small units linked together in a single polymerization reaction. And we've already seen that radical reactions are chain reactions, so that radical chemistry is a perfect type of chain reaction for making polymers. And let me illustrate. Polymer chain reactions require an initiation step, something that makes radicals to begin with. And a little bit of heat together with a dialkyl peroxide makes alkoxy radicals. And those radicals then are available for reacting further to initiate propagation steps that continue for many, many cycles, including uh, reactions with alkenes. So let's write an alkoxy radical together with an alkene. And the reaction conditions typically involve just a small amount of dialkyl peroxide to get the radical process going, and a much, much larger amount of ethylene. Those two guys can react. Fischer, one electron from the radical, one electron from the pi bond, the other electron from the pi bond goes to this carbon. So we've done our electron bookkeeping with these fish hook arrows that indicate movement of single electrons. So we form a sigma bond to a carbon and end up with a radical. And this radical can react with more ethylene. One electron, one electron, make a new radical. There's the new bond. Here's the end with the radical. That radical can react with more ethylene. So each time there's been that one electron chemistry, homolytic cleavage of the pi bond, just the same kind of bookkeeping that we typically do. Each time we've added an ethylene unit with a new bond formed here, initial one is here, next one is here. And because we're adding ethylene units along the chain, this is called polyethylene. After many, many repetitions, we end up something that has an alkoxy group on the end. It almost doesn't matter because the chain is so long, tens of thousands of units, or n is large. And eventually something at the end of that will catch on to that radical. Another radical is a good example and cause termination. So this makes polyethylene, a compound with as many, many ethylene units linked together. Ethylene could have something attached to it, and the same chemistry would happen. Let's uh, look at another example. If there were a methyl group here, then there would be a methyl group attached here. I'm going to write Me, and a methyl group attached here and here. As the methyl group is on this, and notice each time the addition occurs in a way that would make the more stable secondary radical rather than the primary radical. And ultimately, you have a chain that's very long with methyl groups sticking off of it. This might not be methyl. If it is methyl, by the way, we make a compound called polypropylene. So hydrogen yields a compound called polyethylene. If it's methyl, we're starting with a compound called propylene, so it's polypropylene. You've heard of polypropylene. They make clothes out of it. They make tires out of it. They make all kinds of plastic parts out of it. make very good plastic... Uh, Drinking bottles out of it can be made uh, stronger than polyethylene. It can be made so it's very clear, very attractive. We might have uh, the halogen sticking down here. Chlorine is common. So we ultimately end up with lots of chlorines. And that ethylene with a chlorine on it is called vinyl chloride. So when chlorine is attached, we have polyvinyl chloride. You know this is PVC. PVC pipe is the most common application, but there are many others. It's a very strong plastic. And finally, just one other example, because it's interesting. Instead of sticking off uh, some smaller group like this, it's possible, larger group, six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds. This is a special aromatic ring. That's a type that we'll talk about next semester. And when it's attached to ethylene, this is a compound known as styrene. So what do you think the polymer is that's made from this stuff? Well, it would be polystyrene. And it's possible to make polystyrene, which normally is, would come out as just hard plastic beads that can be molded into lots of things. 
it's possible to make polystyrene while you're blowing a gas in it. And that gas then makes a foam, and that's called styrofoam. And it's a terrific insulation. You remember the styrofoam cups and the styrofoam used for takeout foods to keep them warm and cold, that kind of thing. So these are a few of the polymers that are made by a polymerization process initiated by something like an alkoxy radical. We have lots and lots of the alkene molecules present, whether it's ethylene or propylene or vinyl chloride or styrene. And the exact properties of the long chain polymer that's made is dependent on what's sticking onto this chain. Ability to attach methyl or chlorine or aromatic groups attached to it lets people make polymers that have typically better properties for one kind or another. And so there are a wide variety of uses for these polymers that are made by radical polymerization, a very important process.